I guess by now you've all seen how useful integrity constraints are actually to eliminate unwanted solution candidates. So syntactically they look well more or less like normal rules just that they are so to speak headless because the idea is whenever this body here is satisfied uh, this implies a contradiction and the current solution candidate uh, is invalid. That's, that's more or less the idea. Um, here's an example, right? So for instance, from, from the graph coloring problem, which, which says that it must not be the case that uh, node three and seven are connected by an edge, but both three and seven are both colored with red. Typical, typical, a typical example for an integrity constraint. Now let's perhaps look a little bit uh, closer at the technicalities and look at a program. Now you may remember this program here. This was one of our exemplars that we looked at. This is an even loop, even because uh, the loop, the dependency, so A depends on not B, so we go once through a negation, then B depends on not A, we go again through a negation and we come back to A. This is an even loop, hence here uh, we get several solutions. In our case we get two stable models A and B. Okay, now we can add uh, an integrity constraint saying it must not be the case that A is true, which actually leads to the destruction of this stable model. So this logic program here has a single stable model, which is B. We more or less, we killed this one here. And in the same way, this, the, in the third uh, program here, we have an integrity constraint that says it must not be the case that A is false and A is false in this stable model of the original program, hence this guy here is killed and bang, we only get a stable model in which A is true. So this is more or less the role of integrity constraints. You can actually uh, set, always separate a program into the program and all the integrity constraints and then compute the stable models of the program without integrity constraints and then just check the integrity constraints in the end and more or less in this way uh, eliminate the unwanted solution candidates. Just add this as a side remark. Now the question is, if you really want only uh, normal logic programming rules, that is not, uh, rules with a, with a true head, the question is how can, we, uh, how can we implement the behavior of these integrity rules? How can we translate these rules back into normal rules? And here's the idea. So we can embed integrity constraints in normal rules by taking all integrity or each and each integrity constraints like this and by adding an, a new art well a new auxiliary uh, atom in the head and also adding the same atom here in the bottom but in a negative way and so the idea is more or less well as long as the condition the original condition from a1 to not an is not satisfied well this integrity constraint won't do anything because the rule rule somehow won't apply but once all conditions are true, that is A1 to AM have been proven and none of AM plus one nor to AN has been proven, then suddenly, just imagine that this disappears, there is an odd loop because X depends on not X and then back to X. So we have one appearance of not. And keep in mind, this was one of our exemplars and we actually looked at this in the semantic section. A program that has an odd loop like X if not X has no stable model. And this actually is, is what happens here. So once the condition of the integrity constraint is satisfied, what remains is an odd loop and this destroys uh, the stable model. Now let's look at this in our, with our programs. So in the first case, we have no integrity constraint, hence we don't have to do a translation. And, and we just get, as before, stable models A and B. So now let's do this translation. What, what we do here is we add the artificial and the artificial atom here to the, or the auxiliary atom to the, to the head and in a negated way to the, to the body and the same actually here to the other integrity constraint. And now look what happens, right? So if A is true, this means more or less that this uh, positive body literal is satisfied and then there is this odd loop left, X if not X, it destroys the stable model uh, and we don't, this is not a candidate anymore. Or oh, this is not a stable model. This candidate is not a stable model. On the other hand, the stable model where B is true, well, there is no way to derive A. Hence, the effect of this odd loop does not take place. And there is a stable model with B. And in the same way, we get here a stable model with A. 
simply because um, if we have if you look at the stable model with b this makes not a true hence this negative body literal is satisfied and the odd loop is activated and the stable model that only contains b is more or less uh, destroyed or or um, eliminated right and what we get is only the stable model with a because if we have a well then this uh, body literal is not satisfied so the the again the odd loop is not invoked and uh, and hence only these rules here work and we get we get a so this is a very very easy way to implement um, uh, integrity constraint also and also it gives you um, the semantics this also explains or is one explanation on what actually an integrity constraint stands for and in fact they are implemented in that way right because it's very easy to come to to introduce one auxiliary atom and to translate all integrity constraints in such a way and uh, then they are handled just like normal rules okay now that you've more or less seen the very easy trick with integrity constraints let's see how things work out with choice rules <laughs>